Hello everyone. In today's video, I thought we'd take a couple moments to take a look at a neat tool I've been playing with a lot lately called Air Manager. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with Air Manager, uh, basically what it is, is it's a thing that allows you to drive external instruments or to just take instruments from the game and display them directly onto your screen. Now, the reason I was so tickled with this is because I saw some really, really neat little demonstrations with it. And I'm like, well, we got to try that. Well, uh, what can you do with this tool? Well, now uh, let's go ahead and show you one of them. Ah, does this look familiar? It looks kind of like a G1000. And oh, there's the G1000 display from Microsoft. And ta-da! I now have a complete working G1000 display that exists outside of the cockpit of the actual aircraft that I'm flying. Now, what you can't see right now is the fact that this display I normally keep on my third screen, which is a little uh, like a 13-inch dealie that I have sitting right above my keyboard that's basically on my desk, which means I now have the ability to actually access all the functionality of a G1000 plus its display. Yeah, that, that that's an actual working display there um, directly inside of something that's external so I can see it much, much easier when I'm working with it. Now, to make this even better, these buttons actually work. So, you know, if I came down here and I played with a CDI or something like that, it will actually change it in game. Now, what makes this even more excessively cool is if you actually have a touch screen, I could come down here with my finger and go boop and go ahead and actually push the button to go ahead and activate the function as if I had a real G1000 display. Now, I was so tickled and I've been playing with this way too much lately, but there's actually a lot of other cool things you can do with this. And again, these folks aren't paying me to do this. This is just something I thought was pretty cool. If, by the way, you're curious how I got this little pop-out screen to work, if you hold the right alt on the keyboard and you hold your mouse over something, you can pop out. So it's got this little plus, you just right-click, um, left-click on it, and it will pop it out, and then you can actually whoop and go send it to my screen. Keep in mind, I have a total of three Three screens here so I could send it up there and the left or wherever I need to send it so this is another cool thing because what I'll actually do is I'll put my two screens I'll do one of these things let me show you real fast Boop. I'll actually take my whole G1000 display and put it on my external screen and now I have something that looks a little bit like this so I actually have a complete G1000 layout completely independent of Microsoft now this is super duper cool now because like I said you had that ability as well but there's actually other things I like to do with it too all right, uh, you notice we got a little top rudder solo here, a neat little plane, definitely for cruising. You know what would make this plane a little better? If I had some glass cockpit on it. So uh, this is a little uh, knockoff. Normally I keep this on my other screens. If you're wondering why it's way, way too big, it's because it is, because it doesn't normally sit on the screen. But this is another instrument I created inside of there. You know, I've got my little tachometer in the corner. I got my manifold pressure gauge. And now I have this uh, gigantic uh, honking little display here. Let me go ahead and adjust my view so I can make sure I can see what I'm doing here. And now look at that. I have a glass cockpit version of the top rider, which is actually really, really neat because it didn't take that much time to actually put this together. I'd say a uh, total instrument time, uh, about five minutes. Now you probably notice these two guys over on the right. Again, this is, usually goes on the third screen. And if I wanted to, I could actually make it. Let me do that real fast to show you how quick I can change things. I can actually make it so it is boop, transparent. So now I actually have like a little floating gauge here, but I can actually change the size of these as well. So you can see I've got myself almost like a G5 kind of thing going. Uh, those two gauges on the right-hand side, if you were curious, those are things that I actually built using a little tool and I stuck them into the program because um, I'm kind of a stickler for certain types of precision and I'm really curious what the mechanical values of some of these things are. So I actually built my own instrument for this too. So um, what does this thing kind of look like? Uh, let me go ahead and pause myself real quickly so I can show you what you get uh, when you grab this thing. Again, like I said, not a review View. this is just general comments you get something that looks like this this is all there is to the software itself uh, you can see up here on the side we have a bunch of different panels that we can summon at any time you can see the one i was just looking at a minute ago is uh, nothing but this kind of a thing uh, we've got like a classic view i call this the overwhelming view but like i really love the instruments on here it's super fun note by the way these things actually work so not only do we have the actual values we can actually tweak these like i said if you had a specific tool you had your finger or something like that you could change them inside the simulator i even went ahead and now built something for the DC-6, which I like flying around. I made this all a custom instrument system that actually are linked properly to each one of the individual engines and correctly getting all the values that come out of the PMDG DC-6. For the uh, G1000 display, this is all it was. It was basically this little ring. Now, if I wanted to take a peek at it, I just press show and you can see that this will appear on the screen right away. Obviously, we don't have the other piece there because I didn't pull it out of Microsoft yet. Now, what's so cool about this is uh, building like your own panels or anything like that literally takes like seconds. So uh, let's see here, I'm looking at this and uh, I don't know, let's go pick one I can pick on here. Uh, classic, I think classic's pretty darn uh, packed in there. Let's pick my default one here. Let's say I have my little digital displays, kind of like the aircraft that I usually fly. Let's say I wanted to add an extra CDI to it. You know, I can go up to instrument. 
Oh, whoop, let me go pull that down so you folks can see it. I'll go ahead and type in CDI, and let's see if anything comes up. All right, we got one for a 152, which is compatible with Flight Sim. I've got this classic Garmin 106A. I've also got a Mid-Continent MD200. Go ahead and click that one right there. Boop. And now I've gone ahead and added myself uh, this lovely little CDI. If I want to see what it looks like, I can press show. Of course, you folks can't see that. Oh, let me grab that so you can see it now. And you can see I now have a brand new little flight panel that I can, like I said, resize. You can see I'm sticking up a little bit right now. My vertical speed, and bam, there is my new CDI ready to go. Now, what's so cool about this, again, is the fact that this airplane does not have that technology in it. You know, I'm actually pretty impressed this thing has any instrumentation some days. But now I have the ability to turn it into an actual navigating machine. You know, I can take my little instrument. I can put a little, like, an EADI right here and just leave it there as I'm flying around. Now, for folks who like to uh, fly like this, which I'm not the biggest fan of, you can certainly put all your instruments right here and know exactly what your aircraft is doing. So it's like, oh, this is the steep turn. You know, you kind of tilt the thing. Oh my God, I'm going to die. Um, you know, you go to you demonstrate your steep turn. Now you have the ability to quickly look at the individual values as you're flying through them and as you're cruising around. Now, if there's a couple of things I like to complain about, though. The first one is, um, believe it or not, most of these instruments were designed for X-Plane and not Microsoft Flight Simulator. Uh, that's kind of a bummer, but um, luckily for me, I know a little bit about programming. And if I find something I can't use, what a lot of times I will do is you can actually go in there, configure it, and you can actually open up the real file related to it. And this is the actual code that makes that needle possible. Keep in mind, this one's a little excessive because it has a really tough calculation to calculate the upper and lower limit of the airspeed. So what I usually do is I don't work that hard. I just like grab the one value I need and then delete everything else that I don't need from that gauge. Uh, that just makes it kind of cool, but this is a little hassly. I, I know this could probably be made simpler, but like, I, ah, ah, you know what I mean, kind of a thing. But again, you folks are familiar with stuff like that. Um, like I was saying, though, is a lot of these are for X planes. So, you know, sometimes you get really, really excited. Like, for example, type in a Garmin and you see this lovely thing. Oh, look at this a Garmin GNS 530 overlay. Now, when you add it, of course, it's just the overlay, it's not the actual you know, instrument itself. You have to actually pop it out of Microsoft. You're not going to get yourself a free GPS just because you did that, which is kind of a bummer. Um, other ones that really makes me crazy, and this is oh, frustrating is uh, let's say I want to get a fuel gauge. Uh, let's say we want the one for the air tractor or something like that. Let's go ahead and toss that on there real quick. You'll notice, uh, let me go ahead and press show. Uh, you guys will be able to see this pretty much right away. The fact that it shows I have absolutely no fuel in here. The reason it says I have no fuel is there's no way to read out of Microsoft what the default value for fuel is. So this thing is based on the fuel of an air tractor. The other problem I always have is this is for the left fuel tank. Not every aircraft has a left fuel tank, or if it does, it probably doesn't have the amount of fuel listed. So you end up having to go into the code, edit it, but thankfully some people are really nice and they give you the ability to actually adjust the units. In this case, I actually edited the units on here to put it in miles per hour to match an aircraft that I normally fly. Um, the other downside to the software that I found too is it's a bit expensive. You know, if you get the Android version, which is super cool, it's the version I started with, you get a lot of this creation and editing, not editing stuff, I'm sorry, the ability to create the panels and add the new pieces on your tablet, which is, or your, for me, in my case, I have my little phone for this, which is super duper cool. That's about 21 bucks. If, though, you want the full software, which also gives you the ability to do things like add hardware to it or add specialized devices like mechanical instruments for your little uh, SIM cockpits, it gets a little expensive. You know, it's north of uh, 60 bucks, which is a lot. But again, given the fact that you can do all these things that quickly and that easily, and for those of you who already have yourselves, you know, an external screen, this is a pretty neat product. And it's probably definitely something, like I said, I'm going to keep playing with it. I have a, a dream. Let me go show you my little dream here. This is going to take a little while to do it, but I would love love to convert this particular instrument panel here, this is a single engine turboprop that's X-Plane only, over into uh, us over in X-Plane lane because it looks amazing. Now, I just think that's super duper cool, but already you can see I've been pretty busy creating a lot of my own little instruments here and there in order to kind of simulate stuff I already have or stuff that I'd like to check out. So hopefully this uh, video uh, kind of uh, interests you in that. Again, it's called Air Manager. I think they just released a 4.1 or something like that. It's just so neat because like when I look down, you can't physically see this. I'm pointing down with my mouse, but the mouse can't show the screen in front of my computer computer right now, but it's actually sitting there and I can look and know exactly how fast I'm going. You know, I can look out the window and I know, oh, I'm doing a 61 miles an hour. It's just such a neat thing and it's a very, very immersive because I reach down there with my mouse, I change the radio frequency, I turn the lights on, and it's just really, really cool. Other than that, enjoy.